classic movie palace haunting. Oh, We're going to be baby. talking about... Oh, I forgot that I titled this thing. Things That Can't Die. The oh. old Warner Grand Theater sits beautifully in downtown San Pedro, 478 West 4th Street, as a tribute to the beautiful but long gone Art Deco Grand movie houses. The Warner Grand is 87 years old and is one of the last standing movie palaces in the land of movies. It's also, according to our pal Kevin from Ghostwatch Paranormal, it's probably the most haunted place in the Los Angeles area. All right, you're going to get to our story with I mean, this we can talk about it up front. You and I used the downstairs restroom. Well, when we, we were, were there. there for a short film festival. Short film festival, which I was so honored to be a part of. So, so it was so honored. Such an honor to be in there amongst upwards of seven, no more than 10 people. Uh, yeah, but while we were there... Let's go ahead and say up top that you're Mr. Negative Energy and you draw the stuff towards you. <laughs> go ahead. Every bathroom, I, the <laughs> rare, on the rare occasions that I deign to use the bathroom yeah. in public, every one I go to, it turns out is haunted. Like yeah. In particular, that stall that I was in, from what I understand... Do you remember what stall you were in? Uh, the last one against the wall. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, don't go in there. What did you sense? I didn't sense anything. It was just weird? I mean, it was weird going to the bathroom in public, but... You uh, don't do that, do you? I sensed that other people were coming. And I wonder if that's a thing because didn't you also send something when we went to the Coral Cafe and then this is like two places we looked up after, yeah, right afterwards. The other place. Yeah. I don't know if I sense anything but it, I mean I never I wonder if it's tied to the fact that you don't use public restrooms a lot so when you go you're uncomfortable and then you draw a ghost out. Yeah. I create hauntings. <laughs> that's how unsanitary I am. It was weird. I remember it being dark though. Like it yeah, was like the light was about, the light was out like above that it stall was, or next to that oh, stall. Oh over that stall. I remember oh. it just being dark because it was old. What, what was I thinking? Like, <laughs> But no I remember like one of the lights above the stall yeah. the uh yeah the stalls was out and it was strangely dark and now uh, you picked that one to poop under yeah this one seems catholic enough for me <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to the beginning when construction completed on the warner grand theater jack warner himself they called, started with the toilet <laughs> <laughs> we had built one toilet and we left it for a hundred years what bad things could happen to it jack warner himself called the grand warner theater it's the castle of your dreams it was also his favorite of his movie palaces it was one of the most ornate movie palaces in california and remains one of the best examples of southland art deco it's it was, a nice theater it's very beautiful right yeah. there was three of them i think you brought this up before when we talk about Googie, maybe or I, I don't. I do remember talking about this. No, the downtown theater. Just yeah, because we were confused. Like, why is this here? Yeah, because I guess they just had a string of you know whatever. And I think they were trying to space them out because yeah. they wanted cities to build around. Exactly. This. Those two sisters who were lonely at the lighthouse wanted to see. If they want to see. Are there uh, any boys in this one? <laughs> oh, I know uh, little Kino. women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there was three of them. There's one in Hollywood, which is abandoned now, but the, the structure still stands. It's 6433 Hollywood Boulevard it's between Coenga and Wilcox. That one's still there. Where if I show you a picture, from? you'll recognize it. Okay. Look is at it right the now? hologram theater where Tupac performs nightly? Well, sometimes it's Billy Holiday. Um, <laughs> it can't be the strip, the adult movie theater strip club. You know, thing. we joke that it's the one where there's holograms performing, but the reality is it's it probably might, a strip club. It now. actually and might it, be it, that one. it could be that one. No, I, there's I, something stupid happening there on Friday nights. I've, I've read several Sushi's times that it was being eaten off of toes or whatever, and Ashton Kutcher's there supervising. Yeah, he's he works there now because he can't get a job. <laughs> okay, so there's a Hollywood one. There's one in Huntington Park, 6714 Pacific Boulevard. That was split into business offices the Warner theater the one in san pedro is the last one standing they were all showcased to uh it's still going like they still show yeah stuff they still there. show stuff they don't, they don't yeah we'll get into that the theaters were created to showcase warner brother films Grand starring War foxes yes <laughs> fantastic mr fox the vicente fox, <laughs> the fox uh, the movie. biopic yeah. point vicente the movie <laughs> the warner grand theater opened on january 20th 1931 and it was the last time that the hollywood elite drove all the way out to san pedro <laughs> <laughs> the premiere film was not doing that again <laughs> this was 40 <laughs> minutes <laughs> I was going to say with no drive. It took us 15 minutes to get home. <laughs> Could you believe it? There was a dinosaur walking the road home. He wouldn't get in the shoulder. There's too many lighthouses for me to be out here. And I crashed into the bluffs. <laughs> the premiere film was going wild and it was starring our old pal, Hollywood star baseball player, Joey Brown. <laughs> really? Yeah, he was in the movie. In that era, guests were treated to live performances on a small stage below the big screen. There was candy girls, like cigarette girls, and mm -hmm. they were giving candy treats. Like they have at the theater in Hollywood now, candy girls. <laughs> It's a strip club, Greg. God. Uh, you're funny. Thank you. And you're edgy, too. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Thank you for noticing that I'm edgy. So they had candy girls, and there were bathroom attendants making you feel yeah. awkward. Like, I dude, I, I, had one I don't even have, like, I don't have trouble grabbing paper towels. Like, why are you here? And, like, I don't have cash on me, and you're you going to feel guilty? There was a guy in the bathroom when I went, and I tipped him, and the money fell straight through his hand. But that's then, only because I made sure it did so I could pick it back up. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually my trick on him. And I said, smell you later. <laughs> Little did he know, he smelled me now. Yeah, and that... <laughs> this is crude. This, this is, is literal bathroom hum humor. You're humor. edgy now. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the, thank you very much you for, noticing for noticing that noticing I was edgy. That I am edgy and I also use the bathroom. <laughs> so the grand premiere was, of this theater was spectacular, but it's over now. And now we have a beautifully ornate theater in a port town. It 
basically was serving you know permanent residents of San Pedro and then the sailors and the Navy guys who docked there would bring dates. That was it for a long time. In 1948, a huge change came to the Warner Brothers, their theaters, and really all studios and theaters alike. The federal government- Junior Mints. Can you believe how good they are? And then they open up Junior Mint restaurants and no one wants to go to the theaters anymore? No. The federal government- <laughs> Everyone wants to play Junior Mint at home <laughs> on their big screen 12 inch TVs. 1948, federal government forced all the studios to give up their interest in theaters, breaking up the monopoly that was allowing rich studios to only screen their own movies and forced them to sell their theaters to third parties, allowing independent produced films their chance to be seen. But really, studios for rich like still uh, get priority. It's, it, nothing really changed. <laughs> the only thing that really changed is that they really did get the opportunity to showcase new films. And a lot of them, all these benefited new audiences and new theater owners. And it was a real heyday of movie palaces and American life, too. Uh, all right, David Duke. <laughs> Boy, the th nothing gets better than the 50s. <laughs> what I meant was the heyday of going to the movies. Right. You're going with your friends. You watch it. I was a teenage werewolf. And you're like, I don't like this. What's the name of the actor who's in that? Who's in Little House of Prayer? I almost said Michael Vick. I'm like, not him. <laughs> he dealt with another kind of wolf. <laughs> it turns out you wanted that wolf to survive. Um, the decline really comes from two blows that are also uniquely American. Television was one and shopping malls were the right. other, decade by decade. And they pretty much decimated old theaters that could really only show one movie at a time. The new multiplexes came and wrecked everything. So now it's the 70s and theaters like the Warner like Grant. Like Wreck-It Ralph's now in theaters. Now he's in theaters and he's on the internet. He's on the internet. Wreck-It wrecking... Ralph's on the wreck the internet. He's wrecking VCRs. He's wrecking roller rinks. <laughs> he's wrecking my Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> theaters like the Warner Grand and all those single old movie houses, they're done now. Luckily, though, the owners... For my short film. <laughs> for your short film starring me. <laughs> that saved the old movie palaces. <laughs> we saved the old movie palace! A key to the lighthouse from the mayor of San Pedro. <laughs> Luckily, though, the owners of the theater filed for it to be a historic place early on, and they saved it from the wrecking ball. So it couldn't be demolished that way, but it, that didn't keep audiences coming in. It survived for years as the Teatro Juarez. It was a Spanish-language movie I was just going to ask, did they turn it into... Spanish-language movies saved all the old theaters in right. Los Angeles. Yeah. That's the only reason they're still yeah. there. <laughs> that was going for a while. That and the Apple Store, which is the real hero. I really want to walk into an old theater, beautiful piece of history, and shop at Urban Outfitters. <laughs> I'm edgy too. It's contagious. <laughs> Teatro Juarez, they close, and eventually it's reopened in 1995 by the Grand Vision Foundation, which was a nonprofit dedicated to restoring the Warner Grand. Right. And that's pretty much where we are today. The theater still has events, like your short film festival. Thank you. But as far as I can tell... It was an edgy short film I mean, festival, like, I, I do say I mean, so like myself. skateboarding, heroin, all of it. <laughs> as far as I can tell, they don't play mainstream films totally fine with me although december 23rd this year i think they're going to be showing it's a wonderful life really it's a hilarious title considering ghosts will be watching too <laughs> it's a wonderful afterlife it's a wonderful f well old greggy beans that's all fine and daddy but i didn't come here to listen to five dollar city worry words about <laughs> some old picture box Where's the spirits? Show me the ectoplasm. <laughs> Slow down, Jasper. I'm getting to it. Let's talk about the ghosts that haunt this old theater. One of the most recurring spirits is that, that of a smiling, dapper man oh wearing God. a nice, fine suit and a tie right out of the 20s. That's upsetting, even in life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I fashion myself to be a dapper, young, smiling No, you're suit, a little too tie. edgy to be dapper. I'm edgy, aren't I? I knew it. I knew it. I'm edgy. I, I knight you. Uh, <laughs> Sir Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> a knight of the roasting table. <laughs> Some have thought that this is the ghost of Jack Warner haunting what he called in his living years his favorite of his own theaters. Mm. When he was alive, he would often frequent the pictures at this theater, relaxing in the seats. The spirit is even seen in the area that he used to sit really? in. Yeah, the back row of the balcony. Here's my problem with that being him. Did he ever smile? <laughs> I mean, that's no. That's the part that's throwing me that, out. He was smiling because he just framed a Kennedy for something bad <laughs> or something. He smiled because he made sure that you could never work in this town again, and he meant it, and he was able to blacklist <laughs> yeah. you just for turning him down. Yeah. He's the one who killed everyone at the lighthouse. Jack Warner, watch out. He's going to make a movie about your dead body. The spirit is only seen when the lights are off under the glow of the screen. Now, another apparition is known as the projectionist, and it's seen by employees in the projection room. This one's kind of weird. This sounds like the cast of Big Brother. <laughs> the, the smiling dapper man. The projectionist. The projectionist. Jack Warner. <laughs> me on a toilet <laughs> with live round the clock toilet cam no i'm not done yet the projectionist is seen loading and operating the projector and he has been said to have pointed out problems that are happening with the projector to employees to living employees living employees Helpful. paranormal investigators have recorded several orbs the old fan you're an yeah. old fan of orbs and uh, ev peebs which are ele EV peebs ev Ask, yes, EV jeebs electronic voice phenomenon it was reported by some investigators that another prominent ghost in theater is a lost little girl looking for her mother who could be heard on the ascending steps to the balcony. They think that there might be two girls actually haunting the theater. They've recorded EVPs of voices saying, Mommy, and do you see Mommy? <sighs> That's recorded. I was going through uh, the website of Ghostwatch Paranormal, and it's just a bunch of shots. It's like a small flashlight and a, a shot in the dark. I'm like, I'm never... Lights yeah. on, I'm never going to that theater again. And they barge in on me in the... <laughs> oh, no! The 
this isn't no. going to be on Discovery Channel, is it? <laughs> One investigator reported hearing a woman in her 20s who was desperate to communicate, but they couldn't understand what she was trying to say. Something that this is the mother looking for her daughter mm. or daughters. Maybe she was speaking Spanish and she's from the... She's from the we Tetra need a, Juarez. We need a ghost translator. <laughs> do you believe in ghosts and do you speak Spanish? Oh, that's something that's common? Cool. So they've captured other voices saying no and get out other voices they've heard mm. both of these were recorded in but only one... while they're showing a screening of get out yeah and dr no um both of these voices saying no and get out were recorded in one of the main hot spots for activity you're joking the downstairs restroom that's so upsetting to me i knew stuff happened there i didn't know this stuff happened there Man, that's very everybody upsetting. mentions the downstairs bathroom yep mainly the women's lavatory oh well where that's where i go that's where i poop <laughs> i do pp in the boys restroom and I, I, this is part of a smear cam- <laughs> cam- campaign against women and i do mean smear this is gross potty you're humor. being disgusting. i'm being so edgy right yeah. now <laughs> I'm being Bill Burr times two right now. Number two. I'm being, a, I'm being a regular Lenny Bruce. <laughs> like Lenny Gross. That was the... Um, one investigator reported that her hair was tugged. Coolest thing I've ever said. Has to be it. One investigator reported that her hair was tugged while she was doing a sweep downstairs in the hmm. restrooms. Another place of high activity was the upstairs restroom too. <laughs> Where I also yeah. When you have ghosts in a restroom, you should just call it a room because no one's resting in there. Other investigators recorded voices saying, don't go the vortex. We like it. We like it a lot no idea what that means but pervert is that ghosts. spook yeah. perverts we all know what vortex means uh edgy some people have heard music coming from the orchestra pit area except the orchestra pit area isn't there anymore hmm. they've heard live spooky music hmm. this is the second time this year i get to say ghost orchestra <laughs> what was the first time in the halloween episode when they're talking about ghost parties in the oh, 20s yeah. one of them was a ghost orchestra and i think i made a point how cool it was it said one more of the active areas double the pleasure double the pun it said one of the more active areas is the old green room, which is under the stage. It's also where I went to the bathroom. <laughs> I couldn't stop going in the bathroom where the performers would get ready. People have, this is weird stuff. People have heard whispers and disembodied voices coming from empty areas of that. Some people smell cigar smoke. Some people smell mince cologne. And some people smell grease-based makeup of performers when there are no performers around. Huh. There's even been a sighting of a crowd of people milling about the lobby and sidewalk all dressed in 30s attire. Huh. And then they vanish. And this was reported by other businesses when eyesight of the warner grand you know it's weird i'm scared of an individual ghost but i'm not afraid of a crowd of ghosts yeah yeah i can do that i can blend right in yeah if it's if i'm watching the film 13 ghosts not scared but if i'm watching ghost (laughs) terrified (laughs) so scared i went through a lot of different blog posts and articles and they all seem to describe this place like it's the haunted mansion like there's a lot of different paranormal happenings at all different areas like you go to each room there's a haunted orchestra yeah yeah, i know right it's like different rooms for some reason jack skellington's there in the winter there are a lot of different paranormal happenings and different spirits there seems to be no crimes or death that happen at the theater and so there seems to be no dramatic backstory of like that that and that's the story of the yeah. little girl looking for her mom yeah. but it's all just fun and spooky and and this is Ali meekly saying we'll see you in a downstairs bathroom <laughs> <laughs>